Okay, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at what many have called the holy grail of the Webpack React stack, Universal Dynamic Imports. We'll use Webpack's new import function to split the code via the routes we defined in the last episode. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode. If you need to catch up, get check out Dynamic Imports. A quick intro to the import function before we move on to React Universal components. The import syntax has been available since version 2.4. By using the ECMAScript 2018 standard, the Webpack team are looking to stay future-proof, and they've chose a very interesting way to do that. So to get started, let's look at import. In gallery.js, let's define a new function. We're going to call this function getMundle. And the only thing this function will do is it's going to import. It's going to import lodash. Now import returns a promise, so it can take a then then takes a function, and we'll say imported. The one argument that then function gets is the full import of lodash. So we'll just log that to the console. So now let's run npm run dev and see what happens. All right, we get an error. This is a syntax error. They say that import and export may only appear at the top level, which means that they don't want to see it inside of functions. They only want to see it at the top level of files. Well, this is true, except for this syntax Babel doesn't understand yet. Import functions can appear anywhere. So in order to get the right error, we need to tell Babel about this import function. So let's exit out. npm install Babel plugin syntax dynamic import. Now in Babel RC, let's install that plugin. At the end of the plugins here, let's say syntax dynamic import. Okay, so when we npm run dev again, we see that we have a new bundle, zero bundle. But we need a way to load it on command. In gallery.js, let's add a click handler. On this h1, let's just have a click handler that says get bundle. Now when we load gallery.js and we click on it, we can see a new bundle has been downloaded on demand. And that new bundle contains lodash. It's got a weird name though, zero bundle. So we can fix that. If we go into webpack dev client, here in the output area, we want a new property, chunk file name. Let's say we're going to name it the placeholder JS. So when it's rerun, we see we have a new name, 0.js. And that's better, but it's not great. It turns out what these imports really need is what Webpack is calling magic comments. If you put a comment here, no comma, just a comment, the import function will take an additional parameter. Webpack chunk name. And we'll call this lodash. Make sure you get your capitalization correct. It's capital C and capital N. Okay, so to save this, when it reruns, we see we have Lodash. And inside the browser, when we click Gallery, Lodash comes down. So those are the basics of imports. Imports can be used throughout your code to load code on demand that will be available to Webpack and the rest of your application. That's pretty cool. But what about React Universal Components? React Universal Components makes loading components in this way very easy. And that's what we're going to look at in the next episode. Stay tuned.